Excel on the Piano, book three, is for the intermediate student. It's 140 pages, so it will take a student a year or more to complete, and retails at $14.95. I recommend the student having gone through books one and two before doing this book, or have had at least two years of piano instruction or piano experience. All right, it starts out like the previous books with the assignment pages, note pages for notes, table of contents, and how this book works. So unlike the first two books, there are, each, there are three chapters and each chapter only has six parts to each chapter. The writing assignments, which will include some theory writing uh, to complete, and rhythm drills, scales, exercises, special exercises. This book is filled with a lot of special exercises. And uh, 20 original songs per chapter that use the chapter's information. And uh, a recap real quick of the uh, pre-chapter with the technique, practice tips, and then the chapter one is a full recap of books one and two. So I'm not gonna go through that in this video. If you want to see what's in that, you can go back to the movies for books one and two. So I'm gonna skip right to chapter two. Chapter two, what you need to know, uh, it uh, starts out with the new rhythm is the 16th notes and it shows every uh, or a lot of combination of rhythm of 16th and 8th to make a full beat. And again, it's uh, emphasized to uh, not feel the division of the beat, but still to feel the one beat pulse. So that's very important. And again, I don't recommend uh, using the division of the beats, the one eanda, unless it's divided. So when you have a, a quarter or half note, um, don't use those divisions is my recommendation. And uh, I talk about key signatures, even though the books one and two um, did have different key signatures, but now I'm gonna explain it in a different way because one of the things if you look down um, that's added in this chapter is accidentals. And in order to understand accidentals, you sort of have to understand what's in a key signature. So I explained that. And the new key and scale for this chapter is A and uh, the chromatic scale is talked about and it's actually used in the um, exercises for chromatic scale as well as it's included in some of the songs. And uh, whole and half steps, melody and harmony, fingering, expanding the hand position. And then uh, in this chapter, I introduced the altered intervals. So that's intervals where the top note, as I'm sure you know, is not in the key of the bottom note. And uh, so I explain all the different kinds of altered intervals, the major, perfect, minor, diminished, and augmented. And that chart is a great chart for you to show your student and to refer back to where it shows all of the um, variable kinds of um, altered intervals there. The, the little thing to the right shows all of the inharmonic or the ones that don't exist and then the ones that are doubled, uh, like a minor third or augmented second kind, kind of thing. Good read there. Um, different uh, uh, ornamentations that will be included in the songs, the trill, the mordant, uh, turn, inverted turn variations, and uh, there is some, uh, one of the things that's new in this book is in the what you need to know uh, pages, there are some assignments, so make sure you uh, notice that and assign your student that, and they of course get longer in pages. If you've noticed in books one and two, there were only a few pages, but they get more in depth. All right, and then for the writing assignment, they're going to be doing the altered intervals, and uh, this helps to reinforce the note names as well as learning the actual intervals. So some of them will be in the key and some will not, and I do it per key. So all of these are in the key of C with the C being on the bottom. Um, so the top note will be uh, in the key of C. So when they see something that's sharp or flatted, they know right away it's an altered interval and not in the key. So good page. And then I do the bass clef. And now I do it in the key of G for treble in bass clef, key of D in treble, clef, bass clef in the key of D, A, bass clef, and the rhythm drills. So now we have uh, the uh, 16th notes for the rhythm drills. Lots of pages for that because it does get a little bit more complicated. And page five now adds the tie with all the 16th notes. And the scale and key signature of A. So they're going to be playing in the four octaves, the multiple octaves, the A scale. The exercises and uh, all the exercises will be in, in played in all the keys up to now. So now they're doing C, G, D, and A for all the exercises. So each page may take a long time to finish, you know, because they do have to do all the keys. 
and uh, more exercises, the chromatic exercise right there that I mentioned earlier, and then the finger pedaling exercise. And this is very important. It's, it's one of the most important skill for a student to be able to do. And uh, that's holding each individual note while playing uh, the other notes around it. So as you see, I have them do it with holding one, then holding two, then three, four, and five. And then of course, playing them in all the different keys. So uh, left hand exercise here, starting with the special exercises where um, learning the typical left hand movement, one, five, one, and going up every half step so they can feel that in each key. Uh, so number two, now they're going one, five to the three. That is a large kind of a, a skip. And uh, if you have a student that's not full grown yet um, or someone with small hands may not be able to do that stretch. So you could just skip that if you have a student that's not able to. If they're still growing, you can always have them come back to that later when they get older. And then the one, five, seven, that is typical in the jazz genre. And uh, now the altered interval exercise. So just like in uh, book two of chapter three, where I had them doing every interval uh, with every finger combination, now we're gonna do the altered intervals with every finger combination. So that's a great exercise right there. Do you? doing all of them. There's not as many altered intervals as there are regular intervals, <laughs> so that's good news. Um, then the songs, all in the key of A, so um, starts out with kind of fairly simple, not too much outside the hand position, um, but then we do that one five one hand movement with the left hand starting with song number four. I try to time the songs to be where they may be in their um, in, in the exercises and all of that. So if they haven't done the one five one exercise at by song four, you can maybe skip to that and have them do that to practice if they need that. Finger pedaling exercise would be useful in this song, using the finger pedaling. And going through all the songs. <clears throat> And again, all of them have a different style and I write a little rundown before each song with my uh, my rundown of the song to look at things to look out for, that kind of thing. And more finger pedaling. And more songs, 15. This one's in the climbing B on that one. Six, eight meter. All right, in chapter three, the last chapter, uh, the new thing in the what you need to know is the, in the rhythm is the triplets. So I introduced the eighth, 16th and quarter triplets. And uh, again, just to um, kind of bring this to your point, to your focus, uh, there are assignments even on the what you need to know pages for them to look at and do real quick. Um, and the new scale and key is F in this chapter. And I introduced triads. So they've learned intervals, altered intervals, and now they're gonna learn the triads. And I introduce it by just simply showing the one, three, five out of the scale. Um, it's very simple, actually. A lot of books seem to um, don't show it in a real clear and concise way. So I like showing, learning the triads just by doing the one, three, five out of the scale. So if they know their scales really well, which is why scales are so important, um, this should be very easy for them to do. And they're gonna play the triad with all the keys in those boxes to check off. And then I introduce the four kinds of triads, major, minor, diminished, and augmented. So then they can go back and play all four triads in all of those keys that they've done so far. All right, and now also I introduced the minor scales, and I could not wait to introduce minor scales uh, because I love writing songs in the key of minor, so in a minor key. So a lot of the songs do have, it goes back and forth between the F major and the D minor in this uh, chapter. Uh, but this chart right here is a great chart to um, show your student and have them refer back to if needed. It shows the major and then the relative minor scale, um, and you can also, it tells how it's the sixth scale degree for finding the relative minor that has the same key, sig key signature. And then it shows the three kinds of minor, the natural, harmonic, and melodic kinds of minor. And uh, then a little bit of information here, the Picardy third, kind of a, there is a song that uses that uh, in the, the end of the song goes to the parallel major and uh, suspension resolution, double sharps and double flats. And you'll be happy to hear, I do not use those in any of the songs. There are no sh double sharps and double flats, <laughs> but it's good to at least have the student know what they are. So if they do run across that, say if they're playing a Chopin piece, which you like to, to use those. Um, and then the ledger lines, and there is a, a written assignment page uh, for the ledger lines. And I recommend the student be able to visually recognize up to three ledger lines. Um, 
dynamics. I, I talk about dynamics in a little bit of a different light in this chapter where the piano is actually being a percussive instrument, is actually not able to um, to do di to do a crescendo as you know when you hit a note it dies it doesn't crescendo like a singer can do or a stringed instrument can actually crescendo on a held note so on the piano it's sort of an illusion of crescendo and decrescendo by changing the volume and having the style of playing from one note to another so I talk about that rubato and there are lots of songs that have rubato in the um, um, that in for the one of the dynamic ranges is doing rubato, which is actually more of a, a more effective kind of dynamic in some cases, rather than uh, more so than the, the volume, the crescendo, decrescendo. And it's actually more difficult than you would think to do rubato because you still have to feel the beat numbers and all of that while accelerating or deaccelerating the, the tempo. Um, more talk about phrasing being a musical sentence. And then, as I mentioned, the uh, note reading assignment for the ledger lines to be able to recognize up to three lines. And now the altered intervals in the key of F for the treble clef, bass clef. And now triads, so they're gonna have to identify all the different triads, the four kinds of triads. Now they're gonna draw them on the staff. And the rhythm drills, now we're including the triplets, as I mentioned earlier in the What You Need to Know. So they're gonna start with the uh, eighth triplet, then we introduce the 16th triplet drills, and the quarter triplet, which is actually the hardest triplet to do is the quarter triplet. Um, and just because of how each, how to divide it equally in, in a longer stretched out kind of a time frame. And then a review, um, adding the tie. One more review. And now the F scale, uh, doing multiple octaves. And I show the fingering for the right hand since it's different. And now, um, right here, this is a good page to have them look at for the the chart on the major to the minor scale, the relative minor, and a little bit of writing out all of the minor scales to help them introduce them to them. And uh, look at the assignments here, which where they're going to be playing those minor scales. And the exercises, now I use the sixth degree to do on the exercises. Um, I know a lot of teachers use the hand in exercises for beginner students, and I've never done that because it goes starts out right away using the sixth scale degree for the exercises, which I feel is a little bit too difficult for a beginner student. So all of my exercises in books one and two have, always, have all stayed within the one through five hand position. But now I'm introducing the stretch so that they will be doing the up to the sixth, the seventh, and then the octave. So I do more than hand in does where I actually include also the seventh and the Octave for the exercises. And thirds, now this is harder than it looks. I'm sure you know as a teacher, but when your students get to playing them, um, do a, doing ascending and descending thirds is a little harder to do. And that um, exercise number one there um, does use, uh, shows different fingering possibilities for doing thirds. And this is a great exercise here. It's a two-page arpeggio exercise, and it goes from one key to the next. So it starts with key, the key of C, and then it'll go to the key of G. If you see on the second line down, um, second to the last measure gives introduces the D, E, F sharp to go into the key of G. Then it'll go into the key of A, and then finally to the key of F. So you're doing all the keys in one arpeggio exercise up to here, up to now. And then the... Um, Special exercise. Now, this is a really good skill too for a student. Very pragmatic skill for a student to have, where they can change fingering on repeated on the same repeated notes, where they can change the fingering, um, or if they're holding a note, where they can change the fingering. And this is um, a kind of a trick of the trade. I like to say on fingering, if there's no other way to get from one place to another, sometimes this is your only way to do it is by uh, switching fingers on a repeated note, or if you're holding a note. And there are songs that will require this. So it's a good skill for them to have. And then the left hand, um, so as in chapter two, we did the one five one left hand movement. Now we're gonna do from uh, a, an octave or more jump. So they're gonna go from a single note up to a single note, an octave plus a part, um, more than an octave up. And, um, and then also the single note up to the triad. And this is useful skill to have in styles like ragtime. And I do have some ragtime songs in the, or, 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 
a song in ragtime in this chapter, but also Chopin liked to do that a lot with a bass note jumping up to um, to a chord. And one thing that I've never seen in books that teach this, um, a, a great way that I have found to do this is instead of doing the little finger for both the bass note and the little finger for the triad, Rather than doing that, stretching out the hand and doing a three, two, one fingering for the triad. So that way your hand moves as little as possible. So you're only having to move a little bit to go from, and of course, if you have younger students that um, can't do that or an adult or older child that is full grown that has small hands, they may not be able to do this. So you can skip that. But um, for most people, they should be able to do that where they stretch their hand out and it makes it much more accurate and faster to be able to hit from a low bass note to the triad. Good skill right there to have, good exercise. Now in our songs, um, since I have introduced minor, now I'm gonna go back to the key of C and I wrote a two line song uh, in a simple song in the key of C and then I do it in, I transpose it to the relative minor and and then I write a song in the key of A minor. And then I, I take those same songs and do them in all the keys. So now G major, E minor, same song, transposed. Now in E minor for that same minor song. Uh, D major, B minor, B minor song and A major, F sharp minor, F sharp minor song. And then for this key, F major, D minor, and D minor for that. And then from this song on, song number 11, now it's of course new songs, in, and we'll go back and forth between F and D minor for the songs. So here's my F. And notice I use a lot of triplets for the rhythm, so I love triplets and rhythm, so I had a blast writing these songs. And another F major, now D minor for song 13. Just a little question up there for for the student to um, tell what note makes it, what kind of minor, um, and they can write the note that makes it that. And um, another F major, D minor, so I kind of go back. Here's the ragtime song that I spoke about, number 16. And if you notice the fingering where the uh, little finger on F, and then they spread their hand out for the triad to use the fourth finger instead of the little finger. So they have, um, they can get there quicker. Uh, D minor. Song in F major, D minor, F major. And here's the finger pedaling for the left hand. Very important to do on song 20. And then we end out the book like we do in the previous with empty manuscript pages. And this is great for you to do as whatever you want to do with the student. If you want to do dictation or assign them to write something, a little creative song, um, it's completely up to you to do what you want to with that. So there are four manuscript page pages at the end. And there we have Drill and Excel on the Piano, book three for your intermediate student. Thank you for doing the best job in the world and mentoring students and sharing your love of music with others. And thank you for using my book.